Hello, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Aircraft carriers are massive maritime air bases that project the naval power of a nation. Due to their extreme importance, some of these machines cost more than $13 billion. Some take six years or more to build, with each compartment optimally perfected to guarantee not only efficiency and longevity, but also the safety of the thousands of soldiers, crew members, and billions of dollars worth of aircraft on board. In today's feature, we will examine the rough and tough tests aircraft carriers usually go through before being entrusted with the mission of defending a nation's integrity, both during wars and in times of peace. In the United States of America, all aircraft carriers and warships are mandatorily subjected to very rigorous tests to ascertain that they are capable of meeting mission requirements. under extremely harsh natural conditions and international enemy assaults. The first of these tests is known as shock trials. Shock trials are conducted to determine the ship's ability to withstand combat conditions. U.S. Navy's Full Ship Shock Trials, or FSST, are conducted through the use of live explosives detonated in the water a very short distance from the vessel. This is to ensure that the tests are as close to real-life combat situations as possible. In some explosive shock tests, blasts of up to 40,000 pounds are detonated. The aircraft carrier receives multiple blasts and the effects on the vessel, the crew on board, and other materials are recorded and studied for possible improvements. Between June and August 2021, the U.S. Navy conducted this test off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida, for Navy ship USS Gerald R. Ford. This aircraft carrier endured three of these blasts during the three months shock trial period. These tests and trials can be so violent that they actually register as earthquakes. In fact, the shock trial of USS Gerald R. Ford measured up to an astounding 3.9 magnitude natural earthquake. Hey. Apart from these massive blasts, to test the integrity of the entire vessel, some other specialized tests focused on particular compartments are also conducted. For proper maneuverability and speed at sea, the rudder is one of the parts that is vigorously tested. This is completed when the massive aircraft carrier is directed out of the water into a dry dock. A dry dock is basically a ship garage. It consists of a large receptacle which is connected to the dock and when flooded to sea level can allow a ship to easily glide in. Most U.S. naval bases are equipped with these facilities, with some dating back over a hundred years. Yokosuka Naval Base is home to some of the oldest dry docks in the world, much like the one right here behind me. And after 140 years, these 19th century French-style dry docks are still being used today by the U.S. Navy and Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force as they bring in a ship for regular scheduled maintenance. With the ship firmly settled and supporting wedges placed under it by divers, the water is systematically drained. 
leaving the ship completely out of water with its rudders exposed for elaborate scrutiny and maintenance works. A typical United States aircraft carrier is built with two massive rudders measuring 29 feet high and 22 feet long, each weighing about 110,000 pounds. The process of taking these vessels out of water for tests and maintenance is known as Docking Selected Restricted Availability, or DSRA. a process that takes some massive aircraft carriers months to complete. The rudders are thoroughly examined and all damages are repaired and worn out parts replaced. These rudders are the main steering mechanism of these large vessels, and their proper functioning is imperative for maximum maneuverability. Another area of testing on an aircraft carrier is the catapult launch system. Most aircraft on an aircraft carrier therefore utilize the catapult-assisted takeoff and barrier-arrested recovery system, or CATABAR. It propels departing aircraft to quickly get to takeoff speeds in just seconds. While arresting landing aircraft with a tail hook and bringing them to a complete stop in no time. The testing of the catapult system is therefore very crucial for safe takeoff and landing on this mobile maritime airport. The tests are carried out by catapulting unpowered vehicles and other specialized objects. It is done both on the older steam-powered catapult systems as well as the newer electromagnetic systems. Aircraft carriers are not the only types of machinery that require extensive testing as proof that they will withstand turbulent situations. Other large-scale transportation systems, such as trains, are also subjected to very stringent tests. Trains undergo several tests to ensure the safety of their human passengers as well as cargo on board. Hydraulic impact testing is usually performed to determine how much impact the train can withstand in case of an accident. The impact test also helps to ascertain the structural integrity of the rail system as a whole. Apart from testing, the railway industry has also invested heavily on the monitoring and prevention of potential dangers. In Britain, the network rail company employs a fleet of infrastructure monitoring vehicles that scour their entire rail network every day, predicting faults before they occur. Their flagship vehicle, known as the New Measurement Train, or NMT, is a massive rail machine that digitally records minute faults on rail tracks like twists, cyclic tops, and gauges that compose a potential threat to trains. As technology continues to make important headways in the transportation sector, it is certain that more and more innovative machines will be produced, especially with the continuous increase of sizes and speeds of new transportation systems. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.